In this video series we're looking at the basics of filmmaking. In this first video we'll be looking at the rule of thirds, shot sizes and a bit about camera movement. Get it immediate. We're so used to movies and the language of filmmaking that most people don't notice the small elements that go into the production process. But these rules can help to create mood, atmosphere and move the story along. An important aspect of movie making is your shot sizes because they set the mood of the scene. So in this shot we've got a very long shot and it's sometimes called an establishing shot because it shows the location around the person. Then there's the long shot, it's a full body shot from head to toe and it's generally used for action sequences where you need to see the whole of the person. A lot of amateurs overuse this shot thinking it's the go-to shot because it shows the whole of the person but it's not actually that common in professional cinema. A much more common shot, I think it's fair to say, is the mid shot, from the waist upwards. You can start to see the emotions in a person's face. The closer you get in, the more intense it feels, because you're seeing those emotions. Another very common shot is the medium close-up, and again you can start to see the emotions on my face a lot easier. Then there's the close-up. Unlike the medium close-up or the medium shot, this is a little less comfortable as we're really starting to get in close and seeing the expressions in my face. These kind of shots are a lot more intense. This is the very close up. Shots like this and the extreme close up show minor details and expression, such as an eyebrow raising. The angle of shot can make a lot of difference to the way we perceive the subject. A low angle like this makes the subject seem very strong and dominant in the frame. Whereas a high angle like this can make the subject seem very weak. Another basic rule of filmmaking is the rule of thirds. It's the same in photography. You're trying to create balance in your shots. And one way of doing this is to divide your shot uh, with two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, and you've got a grid of nine squares then. Then try and put your subject on one of these side lines and your horizon line on the other line as well, like this, and the eye line should be on the top third as well. As you can see, this should be a nice balanced shot. This is a pan shot and it shows different parts of the scene and is also used to introduce a subject into the scene, like so. This is a tilt shot, it's like a vertical pan and when we go from bottom to top like this it often shows the dominance of the person in the scene. A pulled focus is used to take the audience's attention from one part of the shot to another. Zoom is another technique to bring the audience's attention to one area of the scene. Zooms can be quite difficult to control and far easier to just move the camera in closer. In fact, tracking shots like these are often used in cinema because they change the dynamics of the scene and you can see the background moving around around the subject. A great scene that highlights the usefulness of shot sizes is the final scene from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. The scene is a culmination of an epic movie where the three main characters are about to battle it out in a three-way gunfight. Interestingly, at the start we have a zoom. This highlights the rock, which is what in essence the men are fighting over. By today's standards, the use of zoom I think is a little bit jarring here and makes you notice the camera work and kind of takes you out of the movie for a moment. But you can get an idea of how the zoom can quickly highlight an area of importance. The standoff commences with a long shot. In this case, it helps the audience to establish the locations of each character. Then it moves into mid shots. Then into close-ups and you can see the importance of those close-ups to show emotion and expression and bring a sense of tension. Interestingly, it goes back to the long shot, which is a slight release of tension. 
then into a very long shot as they each adopt their final position. It's as if we're restarting the cycle from long out to close in. This could be seen as an establishing shot, setting the scene again so we know exactly where each character is. Then we jump into the mid shots again, slowly increasing the tension. And now we're into the close ups as the tension builds once again. We go from the medium close ups right into the close ups. We stay at this level as the music builds when we move into the very close ups and the editing pace quickens. I had to stop you there just in case there's someone that hasn't seen the whole movie. If you want to there's a link just here and I'd highly recommend it. So that's the basics of shot sizes, framing and little of camera movement. Follow the link to the next tutorial to find out more movie making techniques.